Richard II ruled England from 1377 to 1399. He's the eighth Plantagenet king to have ruled England. He's best known for facing down the Peasants' Revolt in 1381, continuing the 100 Years' War started by his grandfather Edward III, and for being overthrown by his cousin, Henry Bolingbroke, who would succeed him as Henry IV, and is here in our Kings and Queens timeline, ruling around 650 years ago. When he was born in 1367, his grandfather Edward III had been on the throne for about 40 years. He was the son of the king's eldest, Edward the Black Prince, who would have ruled England as Edward IV had he not died in 1376. As a consequence, when Edward III's 50-year reign finally ended, his grandson was crowned. Before the old king died, he perhaps detected that trouble was brewing. Another son of his, John of Gaunt, had become one of the richest, most powerful men in England, and it seems there were fears that he would usurp the throne. To that end, the king's young grandson was quickly made Prince of Wales, a kind of king-in-waiting position. Additionally, Richard and John of Gaunt's son, Henry Bolingbroke, were summoned to stand before the elderly Edward III. The young cousins were made to swear an oath that they would never take up arms against each other, and they were rewarded by being made Knights of the Blue Garter. Edward III died in 1377, and 10-year-old Richard was crowned. One of Richard II's earliest challenges was the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. In earlier decades, the Black Death had swept through Europe, killing up to half of the continent's population. Peasants working hard to generate profits for landowners were therefore thin on the ground, and on top of that, income from rents had collapsed. How would those in charge pay for things like trinkets, horses, and the 100-year war Edward III had just started? Simple, a poll tax. Three of them were introduced between 1377 and 1381 forcing already poor peasants to hand over even more of their hard-earned pennies. Eventually, the peasants had enough and riots broke out across the country. Peasant armies, many of them well-trained archers thanks to Edward III's efforts to create a kingdom of warriors, marched on London. Their target wasn't the king, but the greedy aristocrats around him. Nobles such as the king's uncle, John of Gaunt, whose Savoy palace was burnt to a cinder. The peasants were inspired by several leaders. One of them, a radical priest who impassioned them with the famous words, when Adam delved and Eve span, who was then the gentleman. London seemed leaderless. The young king, holed up in the Tower of London for his own protection, took charge and issued a charter of liberties, after which some of the peasants dispersed. He also left the tower and confronted the rebels. At Mile End, he came face to face with another peasant leader, Watt Tyler. Why hadn't the men of Kent and Essex gone home, he asked. A row ensued, and the Lord Mayor of London stepped forward and stabbed Tyler to death in front of the king. The atmosphere was suddenly very dangerous. Richard, however, rode up to the peasant army, told them, I am your leader, follow me. And amazingly, the angry mob did just that and dispersed. Richard II was no longer a boy, he was a man, and to prove it, he married Anna of Bohemia the following year. He would now rule as a great king, only it didn't quite work out that way. Instead of learning the lessons of history, he created resentment amongst the ruling elites by favouring a small clique of nobles and lavishing gifts on them. Richard was even warned by the nobles, who asked him to consider how things had turned out for his great-grandfather, Edward II, who came a cropper specifically for picking favourites. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. Each uptick helps us make new episodes. Please also subscribe if you haven't done so already. By the way, the Charter of Liberties he'd signed to appease the peasants was torn up as soon as everything had settled down again. Taxes were imposed once more, and the money raised was squandered on a military expedition to France. However, there were no stunning victories similar to those his grandfather Edward III had won at Crassy and Poitiers. Instead, Richard's army came home humiliated. In fact, it was worse than that. For the next couple of years, the French were threatening to invade England. As a consequence, the wonderful Parliament of 1386 decided to help Richard, but only if he dismissed his favourites. The exchange went something like this. Dismiss your favourites. Ha! Huh, I wouldn't listen to you if you asked me to dismiss a kitchen maid, said the king. Oh yeah? Yeah. In fact, I might just get the French to come over and kick you guys out. How about we just depose you then? Whoa, 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 whoa. In addition, his powers were placed in the hands of guardians, a humiliation he wouldn't forget and which would later lead to his downfall. Things then settled down a bit for King Richard, who occupied himself by seeking a permanent peace with France and inventing the handkerchief and a royal cookbook. Behind the scenes, though, the king was plotting revenge. By the end of the 1390s, he felt powerful enough to show his hand. Those lords who had rebelled against him in the mid-1380s were arrested and either executed or thrown out of England. One of those exiled was Richard's cousin, Henry Bolingbroke, who ended up exiled in Paris. While he was away, Henry's rich father, John of Gaunt, died. Bolingbroke naturally inherited his father's vast lands, but Richard seized it all. Richard had overreached himself. Other landowners in England were shocked by the move. If he could seize Henry's lands, what would stop him seizing theirs? 
Unsurprisingly, Henry wasn't simply going to let the matter drop, and he sailed a small invasion force up to Yorkshire. Marching south, the ranks of his army swelled. Richard was lured out of the safety of his castle with a promise from Henry that he only wanted to reclaim his inheritance. It was a trick, though. Richard was seized, put in prison, and dethroned. Henry was crowned King Henry IV in September 1399, just 12 weeks after invading. Having the former king hanging around, though, was awkward and dangerous. What if support from him grew? To solve this little problem, poor Richard II was starved to death. The former king died in February 1400, aged 33. He was buried at King's Langley Priory, but in 1413 was moved by Henry's son, by then King Henry V, to Westminster Abbey. In our next video, we'll take a closer look at Richard II's successor, Henry Bolingbroke.